In this problem, we're going to integrate dx over x times the natural log of x squared from e to infinity. So this is an example of something that's called an improper integral. So in this case, it's improper because it has this infinity up here. So in order to integrate this, it looks like we have to use a u substitution. So what I'll do first is I'll first uh, compute the indefinite integral, and then at the end, go back and work with the limits of integration. So let's focus just on this first. Then at the end, we'll go back and work with the limits. The reason for doing this uh, is because it makes the notation uh, easier. Okay, so to integrate this, we have to make a u sub. So we'll let u be the natural log of x. So u equals ln x. And then du will be 1 over x dx. So 1 over x dx. Or this is the same as dx over x. And now you see it's exactly what we have here. right? So this is equal to, so du is the dx over x. So we get du. On the bottom here, we just get u squared. So now we can bring the u upstairs. So it becomes u to the negative 2 du. And we can use the power rule for integration. So we add 1 to the exponent. So we get u to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus our constant of integration, capital C. So this is equal to negative 1 over, and then u was the natural log of x, plus our constant c. All right, so now let's go back and do the improper integral. So let's do it. So we have the improper integral from e to infinity of dx over x parentheses ln x squared. And what you do when you have an infinity is you replace it with the letter. So like I like to use the letter b. And then you let b approach infinity. That's the same thing as what we have here, right? So you replace the infinity with the letter, and then you let b approach the infinity. So this is dx over x parentheses ln x quantity squared. Good stuff. So we still have the limit. So limit b going to infinity. And now let's go ahead and integrate. Well, we already did that. We don't need the plus c because it's a definite integral. So we can drop the plus c. They end up canceling when you subtract. So we have ln x and then bracket e to b. Beautiful stuff. So generally, when you have um, improper integrals, I probably should mention this. It's a good idea. You don't always have to do it this way, but you can. You can just do the indefinite one first, right? And then go back and use the proper notation. It makes it easier. That way you don't have to like change the limits of integration in the problem and have to worry about the infinity. It just makes it a little bit cleaner and a little bit easier to understand usually. All right, let me come down here. So this is equal to, we're running out of room here. I didn't, I didn't scroll up, so I'm gonna have to uh, be really careful here. So first you plug in the B. My black screen is ending. <laughs> so you plug in the B. So it'll be negative one over ln B minus, and then you plug in the e, so minus 1 over ln e. Alrighty, good stuff, beautiful. So this is equal to, let's think about it, so b is approaching infinity. So if you think about what happens to the natural log of b, well the natural log of x looks like this, right? So as b goes to infinity, this is the graph of let's say y equals ln b, so that's also, it gets bigger forever, so it also approaches infinity. So you have negative 1 over something getting really, 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 really big. So this piece here approaches 0. So this is 0. And then L and E is 1. So this is plus, because it's negative and negative 1 over 1, so the answer is 1. So this improper integral is equal to 1. So whenever you have an improper integral and it's equal to a number, you say that the integral converges. So this one would converge, and we say it converges to 1. So I hope this video has been helpful to someone out there on the Internet who is working on improper integrals. Good luck. That's it.